A summary of Plan B 3.0, Mobilizing to Save Civilization, a book by Lester R. Brown. Start loving here. Note. This book is not comprised of clever thinking or one man's original work. When you read, and you please study Plan B 3.0 available free online, you will see that 20% of the book are citations from the world's leading scientists, economists, technologists, social scientists, not the charlatans, weathermen and other shills hired by the coal and oil industry through their million dollar per day campaign to keep you addicted to the most deadly substance ever to addict humankind. Carbon, fossil based fuels. Start loving. Overview. Global civilization in trouble. Lessons from China. Three new stresses. Peak oil. Rising food insecurity. Climate change. Failing states. Tipping points. Time for Plan B. Stabilizing population. Eradicating poverty. Restoring the earth. Plan B budget. Climate action plan. Putting a price on carbon. A wartime mobilization. Pieces of the puzzle. Let us get to work. A civilization in trouble. World facing a backlog of unresolved social and environmental problems. Rapid population growth, rampant poverty, hunger, and disease in many countries. Water tables falling and rivers running dry. Forests shrinking. Soils eroding. Grasslands turning to desert. Species disappearing. Fisheries collapsing. Lessons from China. If China res per capita income reaches US levels by 2030 and consumption patterns follow, China would need two times current world paper production. Greater than 1 billion cars, compared to the current world fleet of 860 million. Paved area equal to its rice growing area. More oil than the world currently produces. Western economic model fossil fuel based, automobile centered, throwaway economy will not work for China. If it will not work for China, it will not work for India, nor for the other 3 billion people in developing countries. In integrated global economy, it will no longer work for industrial countries either. Three new stresses 1. Peak oil. 2. Rising food insecurity. 3. Climate change. Peak oil top 20 oil fields were all discovered between 1917 and 1979. Since 1981, oil extraction has exceeded new discoveries by a widening margin. World conventional oil reserves drop each year, with most of the easily recovered oil already pumped. Peak production of conventional oil is on our doorstep, if not already here. In a world where oil production is no longer expanding, one country can get more oil, only if another gets less. Rising food insecurity. Supply tightening. Little unused arable land. Irrigation potential plateaued. Slowing growth in crop yields. Demand growing adding greater than 70 million to world population annually. 4 billion people desire to move up the food chain and eat more grain-intensive livestock products. Food versus fuel. Expanding biofuel production means that cars and people compete for crops. The number of hungry people in the world fell between 1970 and the 1990s. Now this number is growing and will continue to rise unless these trends are reversed. Climate change. Since start of industrial revolution, carbon dioxide, CO2, in the atmosphere, has risen from 277 parts per million to 387 parts per million. Burning fossil fuels coal, oil, and natural gas emit 7.5 billion tons of carbon each year. Deforestation emits 1.5 billion tons each year. Electricity generation and transportation are the largest sources of CO2 emissions, with coal-fired power plants the biggest culprit. As CO2 accumulates, 
Global temperature rises. Average global temperature and atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations, 1880 to 2007. Since 1880 the parts per million of CO2 has risen from 277 to 387 and rising faster and faster. The correlation of rising temperatures is unmistakable. Yes, so-called scientists that are not specialists in climate science can be found and purchased by oil companies to produce all sorts of other explanations. The oil companies and their so-called scientist allies say that the 3,000 scientists that have devoted their lives to climate science are lying to you, have been bought. By whom? How much longer are you going to bet the future of civilization and of everyone you know on the word of the oil and gas companies over the equivalent of the brain surgeons of climate science, taking the word of the paid shells, the equivalent of dentists and quacks regarding the brain surgery of climate science? The oil companies are spending roughly $1 million per day to lie to you using the same PR firms that kept our children smoking for 30 more years after their own scientists confirmed that cigarettes cause cancer. This time, not millions but they allow torture and kill billions, tens of billions, unless you stop listening to them. Start loving. Climate change. The Earth has warmed an average 0.6 degrees C, 1.0 degrees F, since 1970. Rising temperatures fuel stronger storms and increase crop withering heat waves. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, projects Earth's average temperature will rise 1.1-6.4 degrees C, 2.0-11.5 degrees F, during this century. Ice melting. Losing our reservoirs in the sky. Mountain glaciers rapidly disappearing worldwide. Himalayan and Tibetan King I Plateau glaciers feed the major rivers of Asia during the dry season, providing critical irrigation water for agriculture. If melting continues at current rates, rivers like the Yellow, Yanks, Ganges, and Indus could become seasonal, devastating wheat and rice harvests. Ice melting. Rising seas. Massive Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets are melting at accelerating rates. Together hold enough water to raise sea level 12 meters, 39 feet. A 10 meter rise in sea level today would inundate coastal areas home to more than 600 million people. The risk is that climate change could spiral out of control, making it impossible to arrest trends such as rising temperatures ice melting, and rising seas, threatening food security and creating hundreds of millions of climate refugees. Pressure mounting. The backlog of unresolved problems is growing as the world fails to solve existing problems even as new ones are added to the list. The risk is that these accumulating problems and their consequences will overwhelm more and more governments, leading to widespread state failure. Failing states. States fail when governments lose control of part or all of their territory and can no longer ensure their people as security. Rapidly growing populations, resource depletion, and political stresses are pushing more countries such as Afghanistan, Haiti, and Sudan towards state failure each year, increasing instability around the world. How many failing states will it take before civilization itself fails? Tipping points. Can we address the root causes of state failure in time to avoid global political instability? Can we halt deforestation before the Amazon rainforest dries out, becoming vulnerable to fire? Can we close coal-fired power plants fast enough to avoid losing the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets? Can we cut carbon emissions quickly enough to keep temperature from spiraling out of control? Business as usual is not working it is time for Plan B. Plan B. Four main goals. 1. Stabilizing population. 2. Eradicating poverty. 3. 
Restoring the Earth's natural support systems. 4. Stabilizing climate. Stabilizing population and eradicating poverty. Universal primary education. Eradication of adult illiteracy. School lunch programs for 44 poorest countries. Assistance to preschool children and pregnant women in 44 poorest countries. Reproductive health care and family planning services. Total additional annual cost equal $77 billion. Restoring the Earth. Protecting and restoring forests. Conserving and rebuilding soils. Protecting biodiversity. Restoring fisheries. Stabilizing water tables. Planting trees to sequester carbon. Total additional annual cost equals $113 billion. Plan B budget. Additional global annual expenditure needed. Population and eradicating poverty goals. $77 billion. Restoring the earth. $113 billion. Total budget. $190 billion. Perspective. This equals just one-sixth of annual world military spending. And if we don't make this expenditure the authoritative World Bank economists turn studies as it will reduce future and global gross product by 30%. Pay me now, or your children and grandchildren pay me later for your cowardice, greed, denial, inhumanity and stupidity. Start loving. Climate Action Plan. Cut global net CO2 emissions 80% by 2020. Three components. 1. Raising energy efficiency and restructuring transportation. 2. Replacing fossil fuels with renewables. 3. Ending net deforestation and planting trees to sequester carbon. To prevent global atmospheric CO2 concentrations from exceeding 400 parts per million. Minimizing future temperature rise. Raising energy efficiency. Buildings. Retrofits with better insulation and more efficient appliances can cut energy use 20 to 50 percent. Lighting. A worldwide switch to highly efficient home, office, industrial, and street lighting would cut electricity use 12 percent, equivalent to closing 705 coal fired power plants. Appliances. Japan's top runner program uses today's most efficient appliances to set tomorrow's standards, e.g., helped boost computer efficiency by 99%. Raising energy efficiency. Industry. Improving manufacturing efficiency for carbon emissions heavy weights, chemicals, petrochemicals, steel, and cement offers major opportunities to curb energy demand. Transportation. Restructuring transport to emphasize rail, light rail, and bus rapid transit would save energy while making walking and cycling safer. Moving from oil to electricity reaps big gains. A new automotive economy. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, FEFs running primarily on emissions-free electricity generated by the wind, and the sun would allow for low-carbon short-distance car trips. Combining a shift to FEVs with widespread wind farm construction would allow drivers to recharge batteries at a cost equivalent of less than $1 per gallon of gasoline. Plan B Efficiency Measures Efficiency, properly understood is one of the major sources of new energy. If with the same input we can achieve dramatically more output it is equivalent to bringing on many more energy sources. Technical options well within our grasp can enable us to replace the projection of increased global energy demand of 590 exajoules by 2020, up from 455 today, to instead a decline to 425 exajoules replacing an expected 30% increase by 2020 to an expected decrease of 7%, a near 40% reduction in expected energy use without tapping any new sources. Almost half of that improvement comes from restructuring transportation, 20% from improved industrial efficiency, 
and the remaining 30% from the home appliance efficiency especially refrigerators, lighting efficiency, and home insulation. Start loving.